it was a little bit weird the last time. Okay, so um, somewhere in here there should be a screen share. Um, should be share desktop one. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. So, um, so this is a project. My um, New Year's resolution, which I gave part one of a talk on last month or so, was buy an FPGA and learn about FPGAs. And another part of my New Year's resolution was do more stuff in London. And part of that was buy a bike, which I did. So there's the bike upside down. Oh, yeah, you haven't got my, I don't know if you can see my camera, but um, it's this bike. It's a foldable bike from Decathlon. Um, but of course, once you have a bike, you have to put LEDs on it. Um, so that's the, what this talk is about, is putting LEDs on this bike. So lots of people have done this. Here's a picture from Adafruit. Um, so I kind of want to end up with something that looks like this. Um, and you're not going to see that today because it's really hard to photograph, especially with a webcam. But I would, I would like to be able to make this kind of image using my bike wheels. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the hardware. There's a Raspberry Pi in there, of course. Um, it's a Pi Zero W. Um, if I was buying stuff new, I would have bought just a Pi Zero without the W bit, but it actually turned out to be um, pretty useful. Um, the whole thing's mounted inside the bike wheel, so you can't really attach power cables or diagnostic cables because the wheel spins. Um, so having the Wi-Fi turned out to be really useful for being able to SSH in from my laptop and play about with it um, on this. Um, so a lot of my LED projects I've done with things like Arduino Tinies. I think that Adafruit um, project that I just showed the picture for um, was also done with an Arduino. And using a Pi felt a little bit ridiculously overpowered, but it was a bit of a change compared to my other projects. So I'm not going to say there was a, a, a real technical motivation to use a Pi rather than something much smaller, but... It's what I had and what I was interested in using. So the hardware was um, dot star strips. So if you're used to NeoPixels, um, they look very much like NeoPixels. It's a strip. Um, I don't know, can you see my camera as well as the slides? I don't know how this presents to you. Um, but if you can see uh, the camera. Yes, I can see both. Yeah. Okay, so this is, this is the strip. Um, so it's 144 LEDs per meter and I've got a meter of it. Um, turns out my bike only needs 25 centimeters. So off the end, I've cut off 25 centimeters. Um, so I've got enough to do both sides of the wheel. Um, and then another wheel as well. Um, so the big difference between NeoPixels and these are the NeoPixels have a um, very tight um, timing requirements. They have one input pin and you send a bit stream down the input pin that has to uh, be very tightly um, timed, um, which was a problem using, with, using them with Pies. It's a problem with any kind of controller that can't really um, generate that timing. So the big difference, well, there's two big differences. The big difference for me here is that it uses SPI instead of this um, uh, NeoPixel protocol. So you get to send your own clock signal. Um, so if you can only output data at 100 kilohertz, you just output your data at 100 kilohertz, output your clock signal at 100 kilohertz, and the pixels just follow along with you at whatever speed you want. Um, so that works pretty well. Um, it actually leads me to think that I should be able to drive this strip off my BBC Micro because I can just run the clock really slowly and use the user port off the BBC Micro. Um, 
and the other thing is that uh, they're 24 bit they're 24 bit color LEDs so they they control their brightness by doing pulse width modulation NeoPixels pulse pulse width modulation is is pretty slow it's about 50 Hertz 100 Hertz so if you if you wave NeoPixels about a lot you can see the pulse width modulation so that's not really suitable for um, persistence of vision stuff and uh, these dot stars run at something more like 20 kilohertz so so that works better um, but other than that they feel very much like neopixels um, the other thing I wanted to do was detect how fast the wheel is spinning because I want to do some displays to do with some displays based on on wheel position so there's two parts to this there's a hall effect switch um, which is this little thing. If you click on the link on the slides here, you, you get the um, get to buy it. It's about 10p or something like, like that. Um, and it looks just like a switch. When there's a magnet near it, it's on. When there's not a magnet near it, it's off. So in addition to this, I got some magnets. Um, they came from Amazon in packs of 40. So I've got 39 spare magnets. One of them stuck to my bike. Um, perfect for sticking receipts, task papers, or instructions onto your uh, fridge. Um, but it sticks really nicely onto the bike frame without any glue and um, triggers that sensor really nicely. So they were about a pound for 40. So here's a picture um, of the appalling assembly. There's the magnet stuck onto the red bike frame. And then coming out of the blue tape, you should be able to see that little three pin sensor. Um, so that's the wheel, those spokes are the wheel spokes. And as, as the wheel spins, that the sensor goes past the magnet. So the magnet is static and the sensor is spinning along with all of the electronics inside the wheel. Uh, How far away did the, does the whole effect switch work from the magnet? About, about two centimeters, three centimeters. Um, it's very directional, much more, well, maybe that's surprising, maybe not, but about two or three centimeters. Um, um, so yeah, that, um, that blue tape is a, an example of the quality of the packaging of this project at the moment, which I need to um, make a little bit better. Okay, uh, the power supply is a one pound, pound land USB battery pack. Um, It was mostly what was lying around in my house. Um, I have a much bigger battery pack um, that need, but the battery needs to fit inside the wheel because it spins as part of the wheel. So my much bigger battery pack wouldn't fit inside the spokes of the wheel. Uh, but I still get about an hour on, on this Poundland special. Um, there's the circuit board stuck on top of the Pi Zero. It's a Perma Proto from Adafruit. So the extra things on there, there's screw terminals. So the colored screw terminals at the top left go to the LEDs. Um, the next screw terminals just go to the pins and the magnet sensor. There's a, a level converter because the LEDs run at five volts and the um, Pi GPIOs are running at 3.3 volts. So that, that, that's a few, that's, four level converters on the board. I'm only using two, one for the clock and one for the data. And then at the bottom, I put two buttons on, which I haven't used for anything at the moment, but they just go to GPIO. So what I imagine using those for is when, when I have different modes that I want to switch it between and I don't want to open an SSH terminal on my laptop while I'm out and about, those buttons will do something, um, but they don't do anything now. assembly. Um, that plastic bag is the pie stuck in a plastic bag jammed in the spokes. I've taped the LED strip on um, with cable ties. There's a, that white cable coming in from the right hand side is me charging the battery so I charge the battery in place. Um, that's got to come off if you want the wheel to spin.
uh, part of if you um, don't package it. Keep properly. cutting out. I do. Yeah, you keep going very sort of uh, distant. Oh, okay, maybe I should not move my head so much. Um, okay, so. Do it again. It, it sounds like you're switching to a microphone that's some way away. Ah, oh, interesting. Maybe, maybe I need to switch. Maybe everyone else needs to mute. Because I know someone else isn't on mute. Someone isn't on mute at the moment. I can't see. Hmm. Okay. Let's try now. I did. Hmm. All right. Anyway. Um, so the first time I took this out, this cable was not properly secured. And then the LEDs cut out. And when I inspected it later, um, this was the problem. So I'm trying to not have that happen again. We'll see. Okay, so I'll talk a bit about the software. Uh, I, I've done it in Python for now. There's a couple of libraries. Um, the real reason for, for doing it in Python was using um, the Adafruit library for the LEDs because I didn't want to have to learn how to use those LEDs. Um, and then there's another library that will interface quite nicely to that magnet sensor. So I've got some code examples for once. So this will set, um, this will um, initialize the dot star library for talking to the LEDs. It will set LEDs three, four, and five to red, green, and blue. So you can, just pass in arbitrary red, green, blue values, and then it will, um, that dots dot show at the bottom will pump data out to the LEDs to actually show the, show the values. Um, so some things here, that dots dot show command turns out to be really slow, much slower than I think it should be. So I need to investigate what's happening there. Um, the other interesting thing is there's a board rate parameter so that's set to a million bits per second at one megabit. Theoretically, you can drive it at eight megabits. With this hardware setup, that doesn't work at all and you just get random flashes. Uh, but apparently, dot stars are meant to work at that speed. The other thing I've done is detect the magnet. So with the magnet, what I want to do is keep track of um, the time the last time that the magnet passed the sensor and the time before that. So I've got magnet start and last magnet start. Um, and there's a callback function called set magnet edge. That function is gonna get called every time the magnet passes the magnet sensor. And it will set magnet start to the current time and last magnet start to the time before that. Um, and what that gets used for is how far around the wheel are we? So the best way I have with this data to estimate how far around the wheel the LEDs are um, is you figure out how long it takes for the wheel to go round based on how long the last time it took the wheel to go round was, which is the two last magnet pulses. And then you work out the fraction um, of the current time since the last magnet pulse. And that will give you a fraction that goes from zero to approximately one. If you're speeding up, it won't reach one. And if you're slowing down, it will go over one, but it will come to about one. So then I can use that position value in effects where I want the effect to be related to how far around the wheel the, the LEDs are. And so there's a main loop I have, and it just runs as fast as it can and has four different patterns that it updates. There's one that flashes a, a yellow fire thing every loop iteration. There's a thing that tries to project a logo, which I can't really show because it's pretty crappy, but I'm trying to get it working. Um, there's a green stripe that comes on every time the magnet comes past, and there's red and blue stripes that vary by time. Um, so some of the numbers for this. So the wheel parameters are the uh, radius of the wheels is half a meter. Is that right? Yeah, I 
there. So, um, so it's a 1.6 meter circumference. Um, so what that means is if I'm traveling at walking speed, it's going to rotate about 0 0.9 times a second. And if I'm traveling at 17 kilometers an hour, which is a reasonable maximum on a main road in London for me, uh, it'll be rotating about three times a second. So if I can update the LEDs about 120 times a second, then I'll get about 40 pixels, 40 angular pixels around um, on the wheel. And at walking pace, I'll get about 130. Um, so that 120 is a practical number that I've measured. The, the actual maths for if I'm sending data at a megabit to the LEDs, I should be able to be getting more like 2000 updates a second, not 120. Um, and that should give me a lot more angular pixels, but I need to investigate what's happening there. I don't understand what's happening, but I haven't investigated in any great depth. Yeah. Um, so what I want to do that I was prototyping last, last night, I was trying to get it to display the NHS logo, just a blue background with letters NHS on it and a five by seven font. Um, so for that, you, you track when the wheel spins and you track as the wheel starts, you just draw out the letters. Um, it kind of works. It needs to, um, it needs to render much faster than 120 pixels a second for that to be any good. Um, cause when, once you get the wheel really up to speed, it, it that's just too, too low resolution. Um, and it's impossible to photo without a camera that I can control the shutter on to, to, um, To do with this, I'm going to write it round on Friday when I come out of quarantine. I need to get the mounting and casing so that I don't rip up the, ca the cables so much. Probably move away from Python. Maybe because I've got Bluetooth Wi Fi, I can make my mobile phone into a remote control for it or do something with the mode buttons. And it's also only visible from the road side at the moment, not the pedestrian side. So there's another, I've got another 24 pixels to strap on the other side um, and replicate. And if I was going to do this again, I think I would switch to a different language that isn't Python. Now I know how, I, how I'm doing things. And really, you could probably just use a little Arduino to drive almost all of this. The Pi is probably pretty overkill. All right, that's the end. Here, if I plug it in, uh, unplug the charge cable. Because it's a Pi, you're going to have to wait a little while for it to boot up. Let's see if it works. Does that extra mass on there, does it affect how it writes? Uh, I haven't noticed it at all, no. Really? So the, I mean, the Pi and the LEDs have almost no mass at all. The battery's okay. so, so light anyway, but that's really close to the center. Okay, so if I, um, down there is where the magnet is, and up here, those will flash green as the magnet goes past. So I can, so you can see the magnet sensor tripping. If I do that a few times, you'll see this bit is rendering out. It's assuming the wheel's spinning at that particular speed. So it will render out the NHS letters. Um, and that thing is just firing out once per cycle. So this does not, this is what's meant to happen, but it really does not capture on a webcam very well. And I also can't spin it fast enough. 
But the idea is, as that spins, you as a human would see the entire... Ah! <laughs> Oh, my poor pie. At least it's not crashed with the lights are still flashing. Fuck me. It is absolutely jammed. Yeah, all right. I'll deal with that later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the idea is the whole, in your field of vision, the, the whole of the wheel is covered by an image or a pattern of some kind. Yeah. You are truly my hero, Ben. <laughs> Awesome. I, I played with these um, when I did that uh, firework Roman candle um, display yeah. that we did at Codenode. Um, I drove them directly from C talking to the SPI driver in the Pi and I could clock uh, a meter of the, uh, sorry it was two meters of the 144s if I remember correctly at 24 megahertz. Um, or, or maybe it was just slight, I think 24 megahertz was the fastest it would clock. Um, and it had gone out of sync just by the end of the two meter run. But yeah. um, if you drop down to something like about 18 megahertz, if I remember correctly, that, that worked fine for a two meter run of them. Yeah, I suspect um, that a lot of the shoddy wiring and the level converters and things are I um, didn't use level converters. I drove them. I drove them directly from the three point three volts and the Pi, oh, and that, that that worked fine. Yeah. I mean, bear in mind that each one of those recreates the clock and the data. You're only, you're only driving the first one in the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, the, so the practical experience was I can run it in this environment in my living room at eight, at eight which is the high eight megahertz, which is what I tried. The highest I tried. Um, and then when I've actually taken it out and about it, it whatever is different about the outside, um, <laughs> makes it not work at more than about one megahertz. And I haven't really dug into that. It was just like, oh, there's timing problems. I'll make this number smaller. Um, but the timing I'm getting the amount of time that that up that right chord is taking in Python is 10 times too slow for what I'm expecting if I'm multiplying numbers correctly. So, so your, your Python is too long then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I did it in C and I, I used the built in SPI driver to do oh, the. Yeah. I've got, I, I really haven't dug into what's actually, this is actually, I think, the first time I've done anything with SPI at all ever. So, um, um. yeah. Um, but that's an, that's an improvement. It's good enough. The software and electronics is good enough now to use the, the casing needs work. Um, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. But hopefully when I'm out of quarantine on Friday, I'll be able to ride around London and impress people. <laughs> you think you've had COVID or you're just being careful? Uh, my friend came to stay and on her last day of um, working in her office, she was exposed to someone who five days later was confirmed to have it. So mm. he timed a 14 day isolation from the day she was exposed, which was due to, to finish yesterday. But then I got a sore throat at the weekend. So I just stuck another week on. So she exposed herself to you then. Yes. After she was exposed. Yes. He brought plague into my house. She's sitting on the <clears> couch <throat> over there feeling guilty. Sorry. Nice. But she does buy all the shopping now, so. Yeah. All right. <coughs> cool. Excellent. Yeah. So, so do you use a gamma correction in your... No, I would like to do that. The... Um, the place where I'd really noticed that I'd noticed it with NeoPixels as well. The, um, the, the, that magnet stripe flash, I wanted to have it as a beautiful fade all the way around the wheel. Um, so I probably do want to put that in there. Um, but at the moment I'm trying to get the frame rate higher by doing less computation rather than slow it down by doing more computation. So you but said it, you had a load of, go ahead. No, no, please. 
So you said you had a load of magnets <laughs> left over. Can mm -hmm. you stick more magnets around the outside of your, your hub to get a better estimate of the speed? Yeah, um, but if you, if you do it by eye, when it's spinning, that one magnet is fine. Okay, cool. Um, it's, it's getting, uh, if you let it slow down, if you just let the, if you spin it up and then let the wheel slow down, it's off by a centimeter or two every rotation. Um, so the, the initial implementation of that bit of the code was uh, trying to do a phase lock loop and stay well, yeah, that's what I was thinking all that. And actually that turns out not to be what I wanted. The, the best estimate of the phase and time of this bike wheel cycle is the last bike wheel cycle. I don't care about any of the history yeah. at all. Um, it's much better to do a solid jump if it changes sharply to a, a solid phase and frequency jump right now, rather than trying to align with what was happening five yes. rotations ago. Um, so I deleted all, it was very good fun to play with and it was very frustrating. And I deleted all of that code and now I just have the code that I put on the slide earlier. Um, is a much more appropriate PLL equivalent. Um, yeah. Cool. Has anyone hooked up to the um, all effect sensor of a computer fan? Just can't seem to get it working properly. What is it? You know, you buy a little uh, PWM computer fan. Oh, and you want the rotation sensor on that? Yeah, they do have rot rotation sensors on them, but I just get, seem to get garbage out of it. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has experience on that. Not me? No. Dead silence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. We so, got to do a few few more of these. I can I can put one together. I don't know if anyone else has anything you want to do. Yeah. To the me. mechanics um, seem to work okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the uh, well, it's another LED project. Um not too Best easy. kind. Best kind. Uh, the, the one I was talking to you about, Richard, uh, which I was going to do last, week, but uh, uh, I've got a uh, I've got an illuminated uh, kettle. It's a case project, and it's got some nice LEDs. Cool. On it, it's a sort of case for a, a Raspberry Pi. What else? There you are. So, uh, so that was kind of prepared, so I could work that up. Okay, well, why don't we post, post via Facebook and try to figure something out for a couple weeks' time? Yeah, sure. I'm sure we'll still be on lockdown, so lots of chances. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to be here for six months, aren't we? Um, realistically. Six months, Jesus. Who let the pessimist in? Well, no, well, well what's, the exit, what's the exit strategy? The exit strategy is that we've all had it, but if we're all on lockdown, we're not going to get it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a while, uh, a while yet. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Cool. Oh, there's uh, there. oh, some more magnets. Those aren't the ones that are so strong that they kind of carefully don't pinch you, are they? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Yeah, yeah the, the article about the guy getting them stuck up his nose, the, I oh, think the, 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 this is, this is the, that kind. Don't, don't, don't pick him up your nose. He was um, attempting. He was attempting to build. It was a physicist or someone. He was attempting to build a device that detected if you touched your face. Yeah, but what what and was metal in his out. head that made them stick there? Somehow that was in there, and it's like. I mean, maybe he had a magnet here and a magnet there, and it pulled it up and down. <laughs> yeah, that. Just, yeah, the magnets up his nose. They are very strong. Like, if you put that in your nostril and had an external magnet, you would, if I did that, you would eat. I mean, I'm going to do it now, right? Like, it's totally going to stick to. I mean, that will stick to the inside of my mouth, right? Mm -hmm. If I can get it in with that. Stick on. I'll do it. <laughs> I, I, ha, ha. Thank you. I, and we finally hit peak bay. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to not edit this bit out of the video. We'll make it its own separate video. No, no, this, this is it. Right. This is the video that goes out. <laughs>
you were doing that up your nostril. I can absolutely see that being pulled up there. <laughs> just the nostril. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just the nostril. Um, well, that's what I was. So can, can, can we can we circle back? That was quite posh language. Yeah. To the coding language and Python. Yes. Yeah. And do you, what language do you think is going to be faster at processing the the um, data? Uh, probably C or what? Or uh, there's another language called Rust, which a lot of stuff that people write C in um, are, are moving to, which I quite like. Um, so, so, so Python has a lot of emphasis on detecting mistakes you've made. So. And, and things like that. So every time it does a calculation, it's saying, did you, is, is this number right? Yeah, yeah. Is this really a number? Can I really add these things? And it does that every time. So every time there's LEDs change, it's doing all of these checks. And what I want to be able to say is, don't do those checks, just trust that I've done it right. And if it goes wrong, just break. That's fine, I don't mind you breaking. And Python is very much set up to try and make it so that if I make a mistake, it tells me what I've done wrong. But I would rather it was much, so it spends a lot of time doing that. I would rather it doesn't do those checks, it trusts me and runs a hundred times faster. So that, that's, that's part of the choice between choosing between Python and C. Well, well obviously if something trusts you, it yeah. would run very fast. Yeah. Uh. But um, so 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 moving with C, right? Why didn't you start with C? Because that's been around. Uh, basically, uh, these LEDs here. I've never worked with these before, um, so I just wanted to. Um, the easiest way to get started with them was here's somebody else's example of here's how I attach some to a Raspberry Pi, and that example was done in Python. So I right. just started. I just started where someone else had been already because I wanted to get some results on my table as a hobby project right now, like that gratification where you get your LEDs flashing. Like, I, 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 of... I kind of feel your scary eyes going there. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, you were like, no, I had a glass of beer and I needed gratification now. Yeah. Yeah, just for some context, Dan w went to university with me and was in the RAF. Oh, several, and, several Royal Air Forces. But, um, and, and, and other stuff. Yeah. So, so, yeah. No, not so much a Raspberry Pi geek. Yeah, so, so, so apologies for that. I, 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 look, at, <laughs> yeah. I, I look, look at Ben as a wonderful being who knows yeah. everything I know, should know. All right. Well, that's it, hey? Yeah, thanks very much. Everyone go back to their cubicle, cubicles. Good fun. Feel the windows. Looking forward to yep. that one. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, cheers, Ben. Thanks, thanks very much, Ben. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much, Ben. Great. Thank you. Thank you.